Hey everybody, welcome back to Wild Care. It is Wednesday. We, I know we're talking about doing baby corvids today, but instead we're gonna do that tomorrow. So we have a really, really cool presentation today. Melissa, take it away. All right, so I thought it would be fun for us to talk about eggs because we're talking about babies and baby season and yep. the different variation in eggs. So we're gonna start out with our ambassador Western Spree Shell here, Trill. Trill came to us in 2014. She has a head injury from um, impact of a car. I don't know and, what she's looking at. Yeah. There we go. Now she's looking at the camera. So she has um, damage to her brain and uh, she's not really so well. Plus she also has a wing injury. And what really got me started on um, thinking about talking about eggs is because she actually laid an egg. Which, right. I think that's the first time that Trill has laid an egg. Yeah, which is really amazing. And she was uh, making a lot of sound. And then just one day I walked in and there was the egg. Right. So start off with showing you Trill's egg. So. Isn't that amazing? Look at the size of this egg compared to the bird. Yeah, I mean, right? that's quite a bit. Now, that's huge. Screech owls can have anywhere from two to seven of these eggs. Wow. Believe it or not. If you look at just, um, yeah, the size there, just for such a tiny, tiny little owl, that's comes a giant egg. Just amazing. Now, of course, not fertile. Not fertile. Right, not because fertile. we don't have a male Western screech owl for trill to mate with. So no. it's, a, it's an infertile egg, just like you would get at the grocery store, except it's from an owl. Yes. Not yes. what you would get at the grocery store. No. Yes. No, and it has a couple of spots on it. Oh, yeah. Let's see if we can get in. Maybe once you set her down, we can look a little closer at it. But. Okay. Uh, and then here's a little reference too to kind of give you an idea. This is the chicken egg, trail egg, and a quarter. Yeah. Jeez, for the size of that little owl, that seems like a very large egg. <laughs> She started talking just a smidge there. Did she? Yeah. So she's still vocalizing. Now, did she have any interest in the egg? She did not. She didn't. She did not. She actually um, abandoned the egg, which okay. um, happens in the wild. So um, eggs are very vulnerable, of course, to other predators. And when the egg is not viable, the animal will either kick it out of the nest or abandon it. Right. So something in that egg, I, it can be, maybe it's, maybe it's temperature, maybe it's movement, maybe it's sound. Well, and in um, her case, the fact that it's not fertile. Not fertile. Right. That lets her know that that's not a viable egg. Right. So she will not spend the energy because it takes a lot of energy for them to incubate eggs and so forth. So she will not take that energy if she knows that the egg is not viable. Right. That makes sense. And Interesting. Just, and just wait till the next season. So, um, so let's start with the smallest egg. Um, I think we can have Trill with us. Is she going to be okay? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Great. So we'll start with the smallest, which is the hummingbirds. So Melissa has worked very hard to create a setup for yeah. us that can show us all of the different types of eggs, or many of the different types of eggs. So it's a very tiny little nest, and a very tiny, tiny, tiny Look little at egg. that. So this is a real hummingbird's nest that we had, uh, that was donated to us. And these are fake eggs, right? Um, actually, they are real eggs oh, they are. that um, are injected with Paris of plaster, plaster of Paris. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Okay. And then there's so that. hummingbird egg. I'm sorry. Sorry for the shadows. The light in here is always a little challenging. So look at the size of that hummingbird's egg versus a penny. So that is a very, very small egg. And, and of course, go ahead. And that's from the ruby uh, throated hummingbird. Okay. And then also this is what it looks like. Oh my Usually gosh. Two. Um, babies and that's a very busy uh, mama hummingbird on that one. Oh my gosh I love the thing I love the most about the hummingbird nests is how they carefully place the flakes of lichen on the outside oh. to camouflage them so you can see that there in the photo and then if we come up back over here you can actually see those flakes of lichen on the nest itself it's so and delightful. that's a camouflage thing made out of uh, spider silk primarily oh. right what a cool thing and uh, other various oh, excuse me fibers that they can find. Okay, what else do you have for us here? Um, I have a house finch. This okay. is actually a house finch nest. This is one of the little legs right here. And okay. if we want to compare some that also to the quarter there. Yep, yep. So house finches, of course, are common songbirds that you'll see around. House finches do tend to nest in your eaves, or we have a lot of people that call up and say they have house nests nesting in the wreaths on their doors. Yes. Yes. yes, so our advice in that situation is uh, don't use your front door for a period of weeks. They grow up quickly, and then they'll fledge, and then you can use your front door again, but uh, that keeps them safe, those babies. And then here's Some the male house finches. Female. Yes, aren't they beautiful? I love that bright red that the male finch gets. And then there's them in the nest. Oh my goodness. Yep, tiny and fluffy. 
Now, these birds are considered altricial, which means that they are born helpless. Mm -hmm. They are not, uh, as opposed to precocial, like a fawn is born precocial, able to walk, run, um, you know, or, or duckling is able to walk, run, and actually even eat adult food uh, is a precocial species, but house finches, hummingbirds, owls, these guys would all be altricial, which means sort of like humans, that they're totally helpless while they're babies. Yeah, they got to yeah. rely on parents, whereas the next nest is killdeer, and these are precocial. They are. Oh, I'm sorry. I jumped ahead on our, no, our commentary that here. that was a great <laughs> So they nest on the ground, a rocky ground there. You probably think, why would they nest on the ground? But they are camouflaged, these eggs. And Alice knows a very interesting fact about those I eggs. do. So one of the places that I ride bikes, there is a killdeer that nests every year sort of right in the middle of the area where we ride. And she will do the dragging wing, I am an injured bird, follow me mm -hmm. and hunt me, instead of when, when a predator approaches a predator like us, approaches her nest, and that's to distract the predator's attention away from her nest and her eggs. And it's just the most interesting thing. That's how I knew there was a nest there, was that there was this killed your female, and she was dragging her wing. And of course, my first thought was, oh no, injured bird, I'm gonna have to take her to work right? Yeah. Bring her to wild care. But it turns out she was doing that behavior to distract me as the predator away from her nest. Yeah. So it really is amazing. But I just find the camouflage of these killdeer eggs on the rocky ground to be really fascinating. And they also, um, which you told me about this yesterday, I did not know they actually line them up like that. They do. They do. Um, every time I've seen one of those nests, you've seen them pointed in like that. And here's our killdeer. Yep. Right there, there we go. Okay. Very, very nice. That's a beautiful bird. They're just absolutely beautiful. And you'll still see them in open fields. And then there's them in the nest. Oh, so you can see they have really wonderful. great, great camouflage in there. They really do. So that is uh, what three babies and one egg that is yeah, not yet hatched. Yeah, it's hard to see the babies, but hey, that's great yep. for them. Absolutely. And then we go on to the red-winged blackbird. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay, you can see that they um, use many different. What I think is so fascinating about nests is all the different materials that they find and use. Yeah, um, definitely. So these are um, a little bit more blue with some markings on them. Mm -hmm. Very, um, very pretty. Sorry, I know the light is not fabulous here, but we'll take a little look yeah, at those. And I think if we do that with a quarter, it's oh, probably yeah. about the there size of a quarter. Yeah, that makes sense. And if you want to reference it. That's There's our red-winged blackbird. Yes, exactly. And then this is what the the uh, nest looks like. With Look the at that! With that little fluff coming out on the top of the head and those bright pink mouths. We get a lot of goes those guys into yes. the wildlife hospital. And probably our most recognizable um, egg would be the robin egg. I would. Oh I would yeah, say. robin's egg blue. Robin's egg blue. That's and it. I was just reading that. Um, it's usually the first egg that's the most intense in color. Oh, that's interesting. So you'll see a different different shades as they lay more eggs, but it's usually the first one is the most intense blue color. I wonder if that's a nutritional thing that the most yeah. of what in the yeah. the bird's body that allows them to make the color yeah. is uh, is at its height with that first egg. Now, why the color? Do you know? Yes. So um, there's reds and then there's blue. <laughs> Trill's looking at you too. <laughs> so color has to do with UV protection. Oh, sure. I was reading that it is uh, part of UV protection. So if the egg is going to be out in the open, you want to have that extra UV protection. Sure. For uh, So it doesn't heat up the egg, so it changes the um, sex of the egg. So that can be determined male or female. By Interesting. Um, also, definitely don't want to kill the egg if you heat it up right. too much. And also, um, you don't want to have any mutations, and heat can affect that as well. Uh -huh. Now, with the reds, uh, the red is another pigment that's uh, deposited in these, let's see, well, let's take the red tail hawk. Yes. And this egg right here. Now these uh, spots are intentional. The red actually strengthens the parts of the egg that are thin. Oh, that's interesting. So okay. that's how that's determined. So that's why you see all those spots. And this is actually not something that happens right before the egg um, comes out of the bird. It's actually part of the shell formation. Okay. So you'll see a very. And this box. is a red-tailed hawk. You said this is a red-tailed hawk. This is Grace's egg. Oh, that's right. She's the other one that laid the egg. Yes. An egg this year, and, so and same Grace's. thing. Not terribly interested in it. Not terribly interested. Um, she definitely. Uh, you know, I kind of thought that she was going to lay an egg because she was acting very, very hormonal. Um, lay the egg. Maybe took care of it for a day. Understood that it wasn't viable, and then left alone. Interesting. So, yep. Yeah. Oh, Lenore says, I have a nest of hatched house finches in the floral arrangement on my front door and a robin's egg nest with four recently hatched babies. 
on the side of our garage. So cool to witness up a close and personal. Yes, yes it absolutely is, Lenore. Yes. Could not agree more. That's so cool. Oh, so here's our Robin's egg. Oh, so Robin's egg, yes. Yes, and here's our Robin. And so you recognize Robin. him, of course. Everyone knows our Robin, red breast. And then, of course, the Robin. Oh, um, yeah. Look right at there. all those little babies with their heads popped up. Yep, exactly. And, and these are oh, very beautiful, too. These are actually snowy egrets. I had no idea they laid blue eggs. They laid blue eggs. No kidding. And um, they laid them in trees. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah so here's yeah. your snowy egret. So he's a very, very common bird that you see around Marin. And those are actually great egrets. Yeah. And do they have blue eggs as well? Yep. yep. Interesting. So yeah, these birds that you mostly see on the ground are in swamps. Uh, and they do nest in the trees, mm -hmm. and they have those ridiculous, pardon the light, I know it's not fantastic, but they have those ridiculously fluffy-headed babies. They're but comical. who knew that that was what those eggs looked like? Now, about the same size as a chicken egg, right? Right, about the same size as a chicken egg. Yeah, a little bit smaller. And these, Tiny you said you're snowy egrets. Snowy, snowy egrets, egrets. Yep. Interesting. Okay, what yeah. else do you have for us this here? This is a brand's cormorant. Ooh, um, cool. Very common cormorant that we see here in Northern California. I yep. actually seen them when I went to Alcatraz. Nice. Um, and they also have spots in them as well. This goes more into camouflage. So eggs can be colored different um, based on protection from UV or camouflage, or in the case of the red tails and those spots to strengthen the uh, shell. Sure, here's our Brant's beautiful. Cormorant. Look at that gular patch. Isn't that just beautiful? Those mm -hmm. are gorgeous, gorgeous seabirds. And this is where um, they their nest is made out of any sort of material that they can gather okay. on the beach or the shores. And here's this little baby just yeah. peeking out Oh right yeah, there. that looks a bit precarious up on the cliff side it there. It does, yep. it does, and they have colonies of these. Wow. And if we go on to our, um, basically our uh, predators, we're gonna talk about ospreys. Ooh. Ospreys are amazing, I love ospreys. Uh, here's some osprey eggs. They are definitely uh, very flexible. Aren't those amazing? Yes. Yeah, and they're big. Yeah, so that's a chicken egg. Yeah. That's an osprey egg. Cool. And here is an osprey nest. Oh, yeah. With two little babies. These are huge nests. I yep. mean, they're massive. These are, birds have about a six foot wingspan. Yep. Very, very, very big nest, probably the size of this table. Yep. Um, although there is a problem. Because these nests are so big and they like nice flat spots, they will start <laughs> to put those on power lines. Oh yeah, that's not good. It's not good. Um, high chance of um, electrocution, or actually, uh, they come back and they contribute to the nest each year, so they're actually weighing it down. So oh, that can be interesting. Also a so that's mm -hmm. real. Yeah, yeah. You see a lot of that for sure. But I did not know that's what their eggs looked like. So yeah. those are your osprey eggs right there. Those are your ospreys, and then you have your turkey vulture eggs. Ah, uh, excellent. Of course. <laughs> yep, as you remember from one of our earlier videos, uh, last week we had Melissa go in with Vladimir, our educational turkey vulture, and he of course does not lay eggs because he's a male, but you gave him a sample egg, mm -hmm. a just a, a fake egg, and he has actually been trying to incubate it. He has, he has, um, which is amazing. It's, it's uh, one of the rare opportunities that we get here to see this um, instinctual behavior yep. so we're very lucky so that we're cool able to see that and i think of course i love turkey vultures but i think the babies are just like the just most uh, beautiful things ever look at those guys they're so amazing so funny with their little naked greenish gray heads and their mm -hmm. white fluff so funny. So those are baby turkey vultures. And again, here's Vla uh, Vladimir, Vladimir, not Vladimir's egg, <laughs> a turkey vulture's egg. And it's about the size, uh, a little bit bigger than that chicken's mm -hmm. egg there. Yeah. Then we go on to the very powerful golden eagle. Oh, yeah. And golden eagles, um, very massive uh, birds. Their the nests are very large as well. Sure. Um, this is actually a picture of a nest on nice. a cliff, and they just keep building up. Isn't that interesting? And do we have her egg? Yes, we do. Oh, we do. So that is the golden eagle's egg. Golden Isn't eagle that egg. fascinating? Yeah. And then we go over to our uh, owls. This is a great horned owl. Okay. okay. Of course, great, great horned, horned owl. owl. Right there. We know what he looks like, yes. Not really horns. Those are just feathers. Yep, ear tufts. Ear tufts. Absolutely. Let's put the chicken egg next oh. to that great horned owl yeah, egg just sure. so we can do a little size comparison there. So the one on the left is the great horned mm -hmm. owl egg. Interestingly round. It's not quite that egg shape that we get what we're accustomed to. Right, and which is which is interesting because when we talk about egg shape, the more elongated the egg, mm -hmm. we roll it. Let's see if I can do this. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh so, yeah, of course. Because it's shaped different if you just do a little 
it rolls around so it doesn't roll off. Whereas oh yeah, a ball like that, it'll just. Sure, that ball. great horned owl leg actually kind of looks like a lacrosse yeah. ball. That's really interesting. <laughs> I yeah. Know. I was like, that's a big egg, no doubt. And again, that chicken egg next to it, just for a size comparison. And there's the little babies. Oh yeah, the great horned owls. We've actually had a number of great horned yeah. owls. They're going through the phase right now called branching, where they jump out of their nest and they're wandering around in the trees trying to learn how to fly. And of course that means that they fall out, land on the ground, and our wonderful volunteer arborist and our team here goes ahead and climbs the tree, puts the baby owl back. It's all very cool. Yes, it is. Yes. We get, they, we get a lot of calls on those. Yep. Those, uh, Great horned owls there. This is a uh, barn owl. Oh, interesting. Okay, so those uh, are the barn owl eggs. Sorry, again, again the light is not great for my camera. If you different shape. Right? Yeah, a little bit, a little more, more pointed. Pointed. Of course, beautiful barn owls. Yes. Right? Um, but when they hatch, they're. <laughs> it's a for them to become beautiful. Oh, they're so funny. They're so ugly. They're beautiful. Aren't they funny? Yeah, before the babies get that facial disc that gives them the, the owl head mm -hmm. shape, they do look pretty darn funny. I have to agree. The, the baby screech owls are some of the cutest, most beautiful yes. babies you've ever seen in your entire life, but the uh, the barn owls are pretty funny looking. Yeah, they, they have to grow into their looks. I would say. They do. Uh, they're a little ugly ducklings, yes. They definitely are. They're going to turn into swans. Yep. Um, but yeah, they're very, uh, as you said, they're just so dependent. They're all real wobbly too. Yes. You know, getting used to working those muscles and yep. everything like that. It takes a while for them. Yep. Um, we got a woodpecker nest. Oh yeah. We got a couple more show and tell items here. Very cool. Oh, isn't that interesting? Oh my gosh. I think I remember when this came in. <laughs> and a little woodpecker egg. Excellent. So, yeah. Now see, that seems like them. size appropriate for the, for the for the woodpecker it's so interesting when the egg seems too large to be you know <laughs> coming out of that animal like, are we sure are that's, sure that's going to work so that's a woodpecker's egg and again that would be the nest and what kind of woodpecker is it this is nest red-headed red woodpecker. Red woodpecker isn't he handsome absolutely and you can see where this nest would come from there's a little baby right there sure absolutely that was oh, trill girl. making her little noise yes so a little baby right there and then um courtesy Bird room and uh, Melanie, uh, they saved us a crow's nest. Ah, isn't that cool? So this is a crow's nest this here. Is, yeah, this is a crow's nest. Isn't very, that an amazing construction? Very intricate. And then of course here's a crow's egg. Yeah, in it. that's a pretty one. Beautiful, absolutely Gorgeous. beautiful. Um, again, dark. Yep. UV protection. Sure. Great camouflage if you just put it down in there. Absolutely. Um, very intricate. I mean, this thing is amazing. I, I couldn't do this with zip ties. No, exactly. Zip ties and staples, zip exactly. Ties and staples. But, uh, of course, we talked about the difference between ravens and crows. Oh, yeah. So I thought I'd just point out a couple of things sure. here because people are like, how do you know if it's raven or crow? Um, first would be size. Yep. Ravens are huge in comparison to crows. I would say if it's the biggest darn crow you've ever seen, it's yep. probably a raven. Yep. Um, but if you see them flying, crows have a very fanned tail, mm -hmm. whereas the ravens have a wedged shaped tail. Right, so that would be V for Raven. V yeah. for Raven. And Again, it, hard to tell, but hard yes. Hard to tell, but if you get close enough, let's just say, uh, if you notice the nasal uh, feathers right mm -hmm. here on the Raven are all extended and the crows are much, much shorter. Interesting. The, also, the size of the beak, this picture is a little challenging to yeah. see, but in general, the Raven has a great big honking <laughs> beak. And the crow has a beak that's more like that of a robin. Yes. It, it's more, you know, they're, they're both songbirds. The raven's the largest songbird. But the crow has more of a robin type size beak. And the raven has that big, like, I could drill a hole with this yeah, kind of beak. Yeah, it looks like it's, it's comical. Like yep. it's in a, a cartoon. Yeah, almost, yeah, almost that big. And, and here are some, some baby babies. crows. So or, that's what it would look like. Aren't they wonderful? So join us tomorrow at 1 o'clock. We're going to be in the bird room and we're going to be meeting some of our baby corvids, including some baby crows there and some go. baby scrub jays. So very exciting. Melissa, this is a cool presentation. I have learned a tremendous amount. I hope our viewers have as well. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. We're going to sign off for the afternoon, let Trill go back to her enclosure. Um, oh, yeah, Heather says you can see how a bird might get its eye poked out in a, in a stick in a nest, sure. you know, in here. That's what happened with uh, Hinton, our Swainson's hawk that we have at Wild Care. Yep, totally an injury that happens. Yep. Everyone, thank you for joining us. Melissa, thank you for putting together such a cool exam, all these different examples of the different eggs and for taking such great care of our educational animals. Everybody visit us online at discoverwildcare.org and everyone stay safe and healthy and we will see you tomorrow.